Hey, what's up, guys? It's LEGO Hobo 910 here with another LEGO video. In this video, I'm reviewing a pretty small set, 75228 Escape Pod vs. Dewback Microfighters. I don't review Microfighters that often. In fact, this is only the second Microfighter set I personally own, though I have, you know, seen them before and seen them built. So, let's just get right into the review here. So, for those of you who don't know, since Microfighters is kind of a niche theme, it's a Star Wars sub-series where they take a uh, Star Wars vehicle and shrink it down to, you know, like a build about this big and then kind of have the character sticking out comically, kind of like bobblehead type thing. It normally just has, you know, one vehicle of a set about this size. This vehicle is a bit smaller than most microfighters, and I believe this one's a slice bit bigger than most. Uh, but then in every way, they also have a combo pack here, kind of, where it's two of them and it's kind of meant to, you know, like be. A battle. This one is less battle than most of them. Uh, so let's get right into it with the little skate pod build here, the first one that you build. So out of the two builds, this is actually my least favorite. I know it's just mm, it's not a bad build. I just think the Dewback is much more fun and also much more useful in the grand scheme of things than this is. It is a good little build though and definitely does resemble the escape pod. And then there's room for the two minifigures meant to sit in it here. You can have R2 just, you know, connect right there. And then C-3PO just has a small little seat. And it's fairly well shaped up. There's a lot of detailing for the engines, but for some reason these clips don't all go in evil evenly. I'm sure if I just, like, fiddle around, you know, since there is some leeway on where it sits on the bar, if I just slid it around and made sure it's all centered and whatnot, I could get them all in properly. But it's kind of hard to get them all in 100% correctly, as you can see they're all... Kind of at slightly different angles, though the engines are pretty well built up and I like the overall look. It's also fairly spherical. Uh, it's not that hard to get a spherical shape at this uh, scale, though, considering, you know, you have, like, these 4x4 round plates and also uh, these 4x4 uh, kind of round, uh, I guess, panels that kind of fit there, except it's, you know, it's, like, just half cylinder. So you just have to do a little bit of extra shaping. I think it's an effective build and, you know, gets the look of the escape pod down pretty easily. But that's pretty much all there is to say about it. It's a real simple build. Now here is the second, and in my opinion, much better build of the set. We have this Dewback here, which to be honest isn't even really that micro. Uh, they normally, when they need a Dewback in a set, just use, you know, a molded Dewback piece. I believe it's come in like two or three sets. I know it came in one Moss Eisley set. I believe it also came in a uh, Sand Speeder set as well as then or Luke's Land Speeder, sorry, and then also a I think it came in another Moss Size set. It's come in two or three sets. It's not that common, and it's about the size I'd say it probably is about that tall without many figure included, like maybe that long. So it's it's a bit bigger, but this isn't too micro. So if you want to, you can just you know use this as a regular Dewback in a mock, and I think it looks great. Uh, obviously, the molded one you know looks slightly more realistic, but I think the fact that it's brick-built makes it kind of fit in with everything more, as well as just makes it more fun and unique, and also has more posability. As you can see, the, the tail is on a ball joint so that can, you know, move all around, and then also the head is on a ball joint. Then the legs don't actually have any posability, though you can just kind of turn them just because, you know, they're connected on a jumper plate to give the feet different looks, and then also... These can come off to, you know, be reversed around to change kind of the leg position, but the legs themselves don't actually really move, and I've kind of broke it now. So now that I have it all fixed, we can continue looking at it. I really like the way the head looks with these custom printed eyes. They're very simplistic, but very effective. It's also shaped up pretty nicely. It does have a little bit of issue around the side there, but it's nothing too bad. They could have done it with, you know, a larger slope piece, just one piece instead of having it be the two, but I think this works just fine. And then also using the bricks with studs on the side to kind of, you know, be the nostrils of the creature. It looks great, and they even include enough details, you know, like, make sure it's all sand green in between the joints over there. There's a little bit of gray that sticks through, but you kind of have to deal with that with these mixel size ball joints, as they're only made in gray and dark gray. And I don't realize, don't know why they, you know, don't make them in other colors. It'd be so great, because then, you know, just opens up so many possibilities, so many builds can look so much better. But for some reason they don't. And if we remove the Stormtrooper here, you can kind of see the little 
saddle built up with one of these one by three jumper plates to you know convert it into a two. Also, a kind of a little build here for the back of the saddle. Then coming down on each side, there is a clip to hold his extra accessories. At this point, he's holding the gun for the stormtrooper. The stormtrooper does have three total accessories, so you can have him holding two. And then always, you know, just have one in here. Or you can have him holding one and then, you know, utilize both slots to hold his accessories. So overall, I really, really like this build. It looks proper, it works proper, and it's not even, you know, that micro, so it can be used in any situation. And it's just a fun little build, and it was also really fun to build, as well as being pretty simplistic. So, I'd highly recommend getting the set just for this build. Not to mention the great figures and the, the, the meh other build. So speaking of the great figures, let's go look at them now. So here are the three figures in the set, which is unusual because most of the time the uh, kind of Micro Fighter 2 packs only have two figures, one for each vehicle. But it definitely makes sense to include the three here because obviously, you know, you need one for the do-back and then you need at least one for the escape pod, but you can't put one of the two droids in the escape pod without the other. It just wouldn't make sense. And it's also not, you know, really an actual figure. It's it's basically a figure, but not really. So I think it's pretty good kind of bonus throw in there. From left to right, you have a uh, Sand Trooper, just kind of, you know, uh, Storm Trooper on Tatooine. And then you have C-3PO, and then, of course, R2-D2. So let's start with two droids. I think they're probably the least interesting figures. You have R2-D2, which is pretty standard R2, same as in all the other sets, you know, with the... Uh, print going all the way around the dome piece for his head, and then the same print on the front, same droid legs, you know, where you have the articulation right there, so you can kind of tilt him back or forward as he goes. Pretty standard R2, nothing special there. And then we have C-3PO, which is a nice figure to get, because he actually surprisingly doesn't come in that many sets recently. We haven't gotten him too much recently, so it's great that they have a pretty small, easy set to pick him up in. So yeah, C-3PO is a pretty standard C-3PO, but like I said, they actually don't come that often, and haven't come that recently. So, you know, all his parts molded in pearl gold looks pretty good. Back printing uh, is pretty simplistic, except for kind of the wire area. It gets a bit complex. It's nothing too crazy, but it fits, so I have really no problems with it. Same with, you know, there. The leg printing is a bit more complex with, you know, a bit of silver printed there on the leg. It's really simplistic printing, but it, it fits, so I'm fine with it. And then, of course, he has the uh, custom molded head to, you know, give him the correct look, which I think works just fine with, you know, the yellow painted in there in order to get the correct eyes. So our final figure is definitely the best one here. It's the uh, kind of Sand Trooper Tatooine Stormtrooper. It comes with the uh, white macro binoculars there, as well as... Just, you know, pretty standard Star Wars long blaster rifle. And then his other accessory here is, like, one of the long staff pieces with a little Technic pin put on it to kind of, you know, be a stick in order to help, you know, push the do back along, kind of persuade it, guide it type thing. I'm not exactly sure how he deal with animals. Maybe, you know, just kind of take and poke it, make it get moving. When he's riding it, you know, he could, like, strap some food to it and guide the do back, all that good stuff. Other than that, he's a pretty good minifigure. It's uh, using one of the new dual molded Stormtrooper helmets where it has kind of a slightly longer, flatter face, which really doesn't allow it to turn its head too much. Uh, which I'm still not sure on how I feel about them, which I like better, this one or the other one. I think this one definitely looks more movie accurate and looks better from a front-on view and also kind of a higher-up view, but the side views, it definitely looks worse and also the posability is worse. I Still mixed feelings on it. But then for the torso printing, it's pretty standard uh, Stormtrooper printing, just with the you know little black pouches added there, but then just covered in sand. Same with the leg printing and the face printing. It's just regular but splattered with sand, which I think is a really cool look. Then he has the orange pauldron here, just you know little kind of the more papery cloth, older type cloth piece. And then he has one of the clear wide neck brackets here to build up his little survival pack, which is pretty simple little build, but effective. So now let's take that off to go ahead and see the back printing. So 
there's the back printing, which once again, just regular Stormtrooper printing covered in sand, which works, and it's appropriate, and I think it looks really cool. This one could have been a bit more sandy for my look, like, in contrast to the other ones, you know, here has a lot of tan all over it. Here, not as much, so for my personal preference, I wish there was a bit more tan there, but nothing too major. I also wish they would have been able to, you know, print tan on the back, but I'm pretty sure they can't really print on the back. And the black that you see there isn't actually printing, that's a dual molding from the helmet, as well as the black eyes and the, the black strip along there. You know, if we take it off, you can see that it's kind of all black inside, and that's because it's a separate piece of black molded plastic put in there to, you know, get all those black details much more crisp and firm. And then the kind of outer layer is another piece of white plastic. When you take off the helmet, you'll never guess what the face underneath is. <gasps> Yay, it's the, the same Storm Clone Trooper that they use all the time for clones and Storm Troopers, and I believe even First Order Storm Troopers, and it's, it's getting really repetitive and kind of boring, and I wish they would just mix it up, even if they just switched it to a different generic clone storm face, I'd be very happy. But I'd rather that they try to mix it up. With clone troopers, I don't find it as bad, because, you know, they are clone troopers. I don't feel that this specific face fits them. But I wish just once in a while they would put some different face in there just to mix it up, keep it different. But yeah, overall, I really like all three figures in this set. The Sand Trooper is definitely my favorite, just because I'm an Imperial guy. I really like their aesthetic, and the whole sand stuff looks really cool. Getting C-3PO is pretty nice, as, yeah, they're not too common, surprisingly. And then your R2, I have... 5 million of them, so that's not too major of a deal, but, you know, it's nice to get kind of a third, kind of free figure, considering there's normally only two. So, overall, I think this is a pretty cool set. It's obviously very small. It also makes it fairly cheaply priced. It's uh, $20. I would have preferred somewhere in the 15 range, but I think $20 is a reasonable price. Uh, 15 I feel like, would be a nice bargain for some, you know, pretty good builds here, and then also, a nice bunch of figures there. So, I'd really recommend this set, especially since, you know, it's, it's only $20. It's not too crazy expensive. And you get some pretty iconic characters, which are always good. Uh, to get just kind of, you know, generic versions of the main characters, as they aren't as common as you would think. And then also getting this really cool Sand Trooper, as well as some pretty good builds. I'd highly recommend it. That's all for me for now, and bye.